Inside Texas Politics, 3rd Edition by Brandon Roddinghouse, Texas Government, 2306, Chapter 10, Part 2. 10.4, Quality of Justice in Texas. Chief Justice Andrew Jackson, Jack, Pope came before a state legislator in 1983 to make an important request. The judiciary is inexpensive to run, he noted, yet the courts were so overloaded that Texans had to wait months or even years to settle cases. If the legislator granted every judicial budget request, it would be less than the utility and maintenance bill of the Uni University of Texas at Austin. The legislator agreed to appropriate more funds for the judiciary. But Pope's plea illustrates two points. First, the judiciary is dependent on the legislator, legislature for funding. And second, this funding is one factor that determines the quality of justice in Texas. Let's take a look at how well the judicial system is performing today. Caseload overworked judges. Caseload serves as an indicator of the efficiency of the judicial system and the speed of the justice. Judges rush, rushing to complete cases may make mistakes or be inconsistent. As case delays increase, witnesses' memories fade. These involved in many in cases may become financially bankrupt. Companies might continue to lose revenue and plaintiffs could remain in harmful situations. In 2018, Texas, 30,200 judges disposed of over 9 million cases from not cleaning up dog poop on the side, sidewalk to traffic violations to capital murders. A case is disposed of when it is taken off the court's docket, generally by being heard or dismissed. Even so, over the last several decades, the courts have become more efficient at handling the cases before them. For example, in 1984, the 80 justices on the courts of appeals disposed of 8,000 cases. While in 2018, with the same number of judges, the courts disposed of almost 10,000 cases. Generally, Texas courts are efficient at disposing of cases. The number of criminal filings in 2018 decreased at the Texas Supreme Court and the Texas Court of Criminal Appeals as compared to 2006, allowing the justices to handle fewer cases and dispose of them more quickly. Length of court cases. The saying goes, justice delayed is justice denied. The length of time an individual's case takes to work through the system is another measure of efficiency the ju of, of the judiciary system. Overall, expect, except for the death penalty cases, the number of days until a final verdict was reached decreased in 2017. See figure 10.5. Salary. Underpaid justices. Because most judges could make high salaries in private practice, the state must offer a reasonable salary to keep quality lawyers on the bench. In the Republic's early days, judges received low pay, $1,750 a year. And when times were bad, sometimes the state didn't even, didn't pay the justices at all. Financial times are better for modern judges. See figure 10.6. But judicial salaries in Texas still lag behind those in other large states. Current salaries are less than they were in 1991, adjusted for inflation. According to Chief Justice Hex State of the Judiciary in 2019, Chief Justice of the Texas Supreme Court Wallace Jefferson cited having a child in college and two in high school. As a reason he stepped down from the bench in 2013, these low salaries may impact the ability of the state to attract quality judges. Turnover of judges. Because of the prestige reason reasonable job salary, job security, and snappy wardrobe associated with the judiciary, 
Judges generally stay in their positions. Stability in the tenure of judges is, wel is a welcome advantage for a system that must handle so many cases as quickly as possible. Newer ju judges may have less experience and replacing justices who, who leave may take time. For those judges quitting the judiciary in recent years, many identify the judicial election process as a major factor in their leaving. One judge called this process random and unreliable as she refused to run for re-election in 2016. Others cite the low salary as a factor to some extent. Not surprisingly, most judges choose to leave office before the mandatory rent retirement age. Access to justice. Many argue that the wealthy are at an advantage in the court system. Ethan Couch, a teenager from North Texas who drove drunk, killed four people, and injured two, was able to avoid jail time purportedly because of affluenza a legal defense that argued the defendant's upbringing was so wealthy and pampered that he could not understand the ramifications of his actions. Fearing that the terms of his 10-year probation might change once he turned 19, Couch fled to Mexico. He was returned to Texas and ordered to serve two years behind bars. Couch was released in 2018 under conditions that included wearing an ankle monitor, and adhering to a 9 p.m. curfew. Wealthy groups and individuals do have significantly better access to the legal system than others. This ju justice gap acutely affects the lower and middle class, the elderly, and veterans. In 2015, a third generation U.S. Army veteran escaped with her two young children from an abusive home. She sought help from a legal clinic who got her and her boys court protection so that they could get back on their feet. This veteran was one of the lucky ones. While more than 5.6 million Texans qualify for legal aid, just 150,000 cases were handled in 2019. The Texas Access to Justice Commission has identified several ways to increase Texans access to the court system. These include removing the cost barriers, ensuring legal aid providers have the providers have the resources to meet the needs of low income individuals seeking legal representation and increase pro bono services in the legal community. 10.5 judicial selection and removal. One way to mitigate the influence of wealth on judicial outcome is to change the way judges are selected in this section. We look at different methods of judicial selection and their advantages and disadvantages. Judges may be appointed or elected to office. In some states, governors or legislators appoint judges. Many states, however, have a merit selection system in which a nonpartisan committee vets qualified candidates based on their qualifications and offers these selections to the governor. After selection, judges typically stand for reappointment, retention by voters. Merit selection has been found to reduce the partisanship of, a, of judicial candidates and to promote diversity on the bench. Judges can also be selected through partisan election in which the party of the judge is listed on the ballot, ballot or through nonpartisan elections in which the party is not listed. Judicial selections, selection methods often reflect a state's political culture. See figure 10.7. In states that are more concerned about access to justice and popular control over judicial matters, Judges are more likely to be elected. Only a handful of states have partisan elections. However, states more concerned with establishing an independent judiciary shielded from public opinion tend to appoint judges, often using a merit system. Judicial selection in Texas. During Texas long judicial history, the state 
has tried different methods of selecting judges. Election of judges by the legislator appointment by the executive branch and election by the people. The election of judges gained popularity in the 1820s with the emergence of the egalitarian democratic ideals and the belief, <coughs> excuse me, the belief that justices like other public officials should be accountable to the voting public. Today, there are two ways to become a judge or a justice in Texas, appointment or partisan election. Election to office is the standard method of selection in Texas, and most obtain their seats in this manner. If there is an unexpected vacancy on a court at the district level or higher, However, the Texas Constitution allows governor to make a temporary judicial appointment until the next general election, at which time the appointee must run as a candidate. The Justice Courts of Appeals, Texas Court of Criminal Appeals, and Texas Supreme Court are elected statewide to six-year terms, which are staggered so that not all judges are, justices are up for re-election at the same time. Judges to lower level trial courts are elected four year terms or two year terms for some municipal courts. The frequency of the election of trial court judges holds them strongly accountable to the public. Figure 10.7. Clearly politics is the process, is part of the process as judges must campaign to win votes. However, they campaign under a more specific code of conduct the candidates for other offices. The Texas Code of Judicial Conduct warns judicial candidates to refrain from inappropriate political activity and prohibits them from making pledges and or promises about pending cases or knowing misrepresentation, the identity, qualifications, or position of an appoint opponent. To violate this code of conduct is to risk san sanction by the courts, fines, or possible disbarment by the Texas Bar Association. The organization that auth authorizes an attorney to practice law. Candidates for judicial office are also subject to the same campaign finance reporting requirements as other elected officials. Politics and ethics clash in elections for judges. Judicial candidates must walk a fine line between not violating the ethics of, this, of their position and still compute, communicating a partisan message to voters. In one instance, for example, a judge authorized campaign ads that noted, I am very tough on crimes where the victims have been physically harmed. I have no feelings for the criminal. Observers feel fear that the judges who make such promises are put in an ethical bind. They promise to dole out harsh sentences, yet they must be impartial. Censor and removal from office. Judges who violate the standards of conduct described previously face discipline, censor, or removal from office. Judges and justices can be suspended or removed in three primary ways in Texas. By the State Commission on Judicial Con Conduct, by recommendation of suspension, by the Texas Supreme Court, by recommendation of removal, and by the legislator, by impeachment. These avenues provide multiple ways to limit unethical or illegal behavior by judges, giving power to the legislator and fellow justices to check the integrity of the judiciary. State Commission on Judicial Conduct. The State Commission on the Judicial, Judicial Conduct, which is made up of 13 commission members who include judges, attorneys, and citizens appointed by the governor, can investigate and pr prosecute allegations of misconduct by Texas judges. Justices can be removed from office for incompetence, for violation of the official code of judicial conduct, 
or for conduct that is clearly inconsistent with the proper performance of judicial duties. The penalties include warning or reprimand, such as in the case of a judge who consumed too much alcohol at a social gathering and urinated into a garbage receptacle in sight of guests, or additional education, such as in the case of a justice of the peace who asked another judge hearing a case involving his son to let the son take a driving safety course in lieu of a fine. <coughs> Excuse me. Texas Supreme Court. The judiciary has to protect its own reputation and the recommendation of removal provision allows the Texas Supreme Court to police the lower courts. The court may sanction or remove the remove district court judges, although it rarely does so. In 2019, a state district court judge received a public warning after he told a jury to keep deliberating over a defendant they had convicted because God had told him the defendant was innocent. The Kai court also suspended a Harris County justice of the peace based on allegations that she illegally abused prescription drugs sent sexually explicit texts to a bailiff while on the bench and hired prostitutes. Legislative impeachment. The other branches of government have considerable say in the removal of judges. The Texas legislator can, but rarely does, impeach judges at the district court and above for willful neglect of duty, incompetency, habitual drunkenness, oppression in office, or other reasonable cause. Judicial qualifications. Each level of the court system specifies unique qualifications for being elected as a judge. See Table 10.1. Lower courts have shorter terms in office, allow younger attorneys to run for office, and have fewer restrictive residency or legal practice requirements. City governments determine the requirements for municipal judge, court judges. The only legal qualification for county judge judges is that they sh shall be well informed in the law of the state. A Texan whose knowledge of the judiciary is based only on watching reruns of Walker, Texas Ranger can serve. As a result, justices of the peace are significantly less likely to hold law degrees than other justices. In 2018, only 88% 8, 8 were licensed to practice law. These judges, however, have enormous responsibility as they oversee county government operations, manage responses to emergency management, and hear criminal trials for misdemeanors that are punishable by a year in jail. Of course, as elected officials, they are pressed by the public and businesses to do a good job, keeping the streets safe and the roads in good shape. The higher courts alter the age and experience requirements for justices. Justices for the appellate and two Supreme Courts must be over 35 years of age, but are forced to retire at 74. Justices on these courts must also have 10 years of legal experience instead of four for the lower courts. Problems with the partisan elections. In a state that is most often dominated by one party, the Democrats until the 1980s, then the Republicans through the present, judicial contests are often one-sided and the primary is where the real battle for the office takes place. Party labels provide some basic information about the attitudes and values of judges and hints at the way they may decide matters of public policy. Party labels, however, become crutches for voters who have little information about the judicial candidates and often scant knowledge about the judicial or the issues at stake. Furthermore, the judicial partisan election elections in Texas suffer from low turnout, low interest, and conflicts of interest that arise when judicial candidates must rely on individuals and groups for campaign contributions. <coughs> 
excuse me, low turnout voters often less well informed about judicial races, which are often which often are perceived to be less important and therefore are not as frequently discussed in the media. In fact, many voters do not complete their ballots all the way to the end where the judicial candidates are generally listed. The number of drop-off votes called undervotes for the judicial electoral races is high. See table 10.2. Reliance on name recognition. In low interest and low turnout judicial elections, voters often rely on name recognition to decide which candidate to select. As a result, one of mis as a result of mistakes in name identification, voters can elect a candidate they may not have intended to support. In, two, in 1976, Dombey Yarbrough, an unknown Republican with modest legal experience, drew on the name recognition of the famous Yarbrough family in Texas, Donald H. Yarbrough, had been a three-time candidate for governor without winning, and Ralph Yarbrough had served as a U.S. senator. The lesser-known Yarbrough emphasized his youth and religious religiosia, religiosity running against the establishment of the good old boys from the big law firms and pledging to decide cases based on the laws of God, not man. After winning the primary, Yarbrough admitted that there were 11 lawsuits pending against him for fraud and negligence in his legal practice, illegal stock selling, dealing in unauthorized loans, and other offenses. The legal community mounted a write-in campaign against the now indicted Yarborough, making every effort to inform voters what they were getting into. However, it was to no avail. With voter confusion as the likely cause, Justice Yarborough won in the election and took his seat on January 2, 1977. Six months later, Justice Yarborough was indicted for forging a car title and lying in, in court. Facing legislative proceedings to impeach him, he resigned from the court. The disinterest and, in, and low turnout for the judicial elections weakened the ability of Texans to hold judges accountable to the people. With random factors like a candidate's name or the support of an interest group factoring into who takes office. Conflicts of interest. Because candidates for judicial office must raise money to campaign and because donors may become <clears throat> the legitimate legitimates in court, some people have argued that justice is for sale. In Texas, in Texas, in 1983, Justice C. L. Ray ruled in favor of attorney Pat Maloney Sr. and multimillionaire plaintiff Clinton Manges, who was accused of mismanaging mineral leases. Both were a major contributors to the judge's election campaign. The media also reported that Judge Ray had told another major donor and legitimate lit litigant in front of the court that his case was a tough one and that if the multimillionaire didn't win this one, he would win in the next. Shining the national spotlight on the case, the a New York Times editorial decried Texas courts as despite Fencing, what passes for justice in small county countries run by colonels in mirrored sunglasses. The Republican Party used such conflict of interest claims to launch a clean slate in 88 effort to going into districts held by Democrats to convince them to support Republican candidates who embraced reform and appeared to be according to political advisor Carl Rove, champions of the little man and not the big boys. The strategy worked. Republican candidates won five of the six vacant Texas Supreme Court seats. Compri compromising judicial experience. 
In partisan elections, studies show candidate quality matters less than party affiliation. Voters choose party over individual qualifications. In 2010, Republicans won every judicial office in Bexar County. In 2012, Democrats won every judicial office in Bexar County. This lurching from party to party and the resulting chaos in staffing the judiciary led to frequent turnover and courts staffed by individuals with little or no justice judicial experience. The influence of money. With billions of dollars at stake in the outcomes of judicial matters, interest groups embracing all political and financial interests pour millions into judicial races across Texas. Spending on state judicial races is an increasing nation nationality as well. National interest groups and their affiliates spent an estimated $28 million on the state Supreme Court races in 2016. Candidates need an average of $1.5 million to win election to this Texas Supreme Court or Texas Court of Criminal Appeals. In total, Texas ranked in the top 10 of states with elector, elected judges in total funds spent in 2018, almost $3 million. Much of those funds, these funds came, come from trial lawyers and law firms, most of whom do business in front of the courts. On average, almost 50 cents of every dollar raised for the highest courts in Texas comes from the from these groups. See figure 10.8. When major incentives like tort reform gain momentum, big spending floods the political system. For example, when the legislator tried to limit the funds from the Texas Windstorm Insurance Association, that could be awarded to Texans suffering after storms. Steve Mostyn, a trial lawyer and major donor to Democrats, gave $10 million to unseat Republicans who voted in favor of the measure. Those who opposed, those opposed the judicial fi fundraising are concerned that a judge who takes money from a donor will rule in the donor's favor. One academic study found that Campaign contributions to a state Supreme Court were correlated with judges' decisions. The media have exposed instances in which this has happened, although it certainly does not happen all the time. Still, public perception remains that justice is for sale. The gap between the high deal ideals of fairness and transparency set for the courts and the practice of judicial politics in Texas seems to be widening. Harsher criminal sentencing. Nonpartisan organizations have found that trial judges are more likely to sentence defendants convicted of serious felonies to longer sentences. The closer the judges are to re-election, judges in partisan elections are also less likely to reverse death sentences than judges selected by merit or by retention election. These outcomes suggest that the partisan election system encourages a certain type of ruling and may compromise justice for Texans. 10.6, <clears throat> who are the justices? In the first days of the Republic, many justices, justices' careers were cut short. Some judges died from yellow fever, Others were killed, and still others dared outlaws to do their worst. While we no longer face the challenges of the frontier in administrating, administering justice, the new challenge to Texas is to provide justice to a diverse and growing population. Texas has rapidly become more diverse, both racially and ethnically, and the justices on the bench need to reflect the population in order to develop trust in the legal system across the racial groups. Greater judicial diversity can re reduce racial resentment and enhance sensitivity to cultural issues and legal outcomes. Increasingly, politicians, civil rights or organization and the Texas Bar Associations 
have taken notice and have encouraged a greater diversity in the judiciary. See figure 10.9. Still a former justice recently noted that the high court is not just like just a little unbalanced. It's a lot unbalanced. The diversity is a result of the gubernatorial appointment of minority candidates and the centralization of racial and ethnic voters in geographic areas, which promote voting for racial minorities to judicial offices. This electoral characteristic, however, limits the ascended ascendancy of racial and ethnic minorities to the bench in some districts. The federal courts consider the case of the United Latin American Citizens ETAL versus Maddox in 1993, in which the plaintiffs argued that the country countywide voting instead of the districts assembled from common geographic neighborhoods for judges diluted the power of minority voting. The changes were made, but the issue spurred debate. Lawsuits filed in 2016 by seven Latino voters argued that the voting system disenfranchised them and that a district-based election should be used instead. The argument was rejected in 2018 by a U.S. District Judge Nelva Gonzalez Ramos with statewide elections dominated by Republicans since 1996. Partisanship rather than race better explains Hispanic defeat at the polls, she ruled. Women. The first and to date only Texas Supreme Court made up entirely of women heard a case in 1925. All three male Supreme Court justices, the total at the time, had to rescue, re, re, had to recuse themselves on a case and Governor Pat Neff appointed three women to temporarily make up the bench. The first women to the first woman to serve on a district court in Texas was Sarah Hughes, appointed in 1935. It took another 50 years for the number of women on the bench to expand significantly. Today, women make up 36% of the state bar, about 38% of the judicial seat in Texas state courts. Indeed, Texas is in the top 10 states with the highest percentage of women judges. African Americans. African Americans make up 6% of the state bar and approximately 5% of state courts. Chief Justice Wallace Jefferson was the first Amer African American to be appointed, then elected and reelected to the position. Governor Rick Perry appointed him in 2001, and he was reelected in 2006 by a large margin, 76% of the, the total vote. Hispanics. Hispanics make up 10% of the state bar and about 17% of, of state courts. Hispanics are the only racial or ethnic minority that holds significantly higher percentage of judicial positions than the percentage of the representation of the state bar. Raul A. Gonzalez was the first Hispanic to join the Texas Supreme Court when he was appointed by Democratic Governor Mark White in 1984. Asians. Asians make up 4% of the state bar and less than 1% of the judicial positions on state courts. As a percentage of judicial positions, they are the most underrepresented group in the judiciary. Judge R.K. Ravi Sand Sandal was the first South Asian to run for any statewide court in 2018. 10.7, reforming the system. The concerns, concerns about the injection of the partisan politics into the judiciary and the vast sums of money sp being spent on judicial elections have observers worried. In 2019, the legislator created a new Texas Commission on Judicial Selection tasked with evaluating alternative methods for judicial selection before the 2021 session. Indeed, advocates for the reforms of the judicial system in Texas have considered several imperfect options over the years. Nonpartisan elections, 
Some judicial advocates have recommended keeping the election of judges but removing the partisan label. Former Chief Justice Wallace Jefferson laminated the partisan process of election. He commented, it is an irrational way of selecting judges just because you have an R or a D by your name does not mean you are more qualified to be a judge. Both political parties dislike nonpartisan elections because it reduces their influence in the system. Merit selection. Often called the Missouri Plan, after Missouri's innovation of the plan in 1940, merit selection of judges is a nonpartisan way to select qualified judges from a vetted list of possible candidates. After being pointed, appointed to a fixed period of service, often a year, the judge must stand for re-election in a retention election. If a majority of the voters vote against retention, the judge is removed and the process begins again. In theory, the system allows the governor to ensure that judges have su sufficient experience. However, it also gives the governor greater, way, greater sway over the judicial branch. Texas has not tried the merit system. Public financing of elections. Elections for the Texas high courts have become some of the costliest in the country, potentially allowing donors to have a larger say in who is elected. A pool of funds could be set aside from taxpayers' monies to give each candidate a fixed sum which, with which to campaign. Democratic Representative Raphael Anchia of Dallas filed a bill in 2015 to start public financing of campaigns for appellate judges in Texas. It was sent to the House of Elections Committee and was never heard from again. Limiting fundraising totals. In the wake of fundraising scandals, the state legislator passed Judicial Campaign Finance Act of 19, in 1995, which capped contributions from each individual donor to judicial candidates. Contributions limits change depending on the type of judicial race and the population of the district. See Table 10.3. To ensure the integrity of the system, the state uses its authority to regulate these funds, making the process more transparent and less able to be influenced by campaign to funds. This allows this also allows potential challengers who may have a smaller fundraising base to compete with the incumbent justices by limiting the amount of money that can be raised. There are also limits on how much a law firm, the primary contributors to judicial candidates can contribute to an individual candidate. The, the rules allow a maximum of $30,000 contribution for a firm's associates for statewide courts, court appeals, and district courts. The legislator can decide to raise or lower these limits. If the state legislator wanted to take fundraising limits a step further, the U.S. Supreme Court ruled in 2015 the states could prohibit judicial candidates from personally asking supporters to for campaign contributions. The Insider View Distrust of an overbearing centralized government put the Texas judiciary squarely in the hands of the people and led to the design of an order, ordered system in which ju the judicial branch power checks but is also checked by the other branches. However, the participatory neglect of people in judicial elections and the injection of political parties and interest groups into the process foster the perce perce perception that justice can be purchased by the highest bidder. Reform efforts have minimized these potential problems by limiting the role of money in politics, expanding the size of the court, and ensuring continued public access to the courts for all Texans. Yet interested group, interest groups and political parties still play a, a leading role in pol judicial elections. As Texans attempt to improve the quality of justice in the state, 
they may look to greater legislative participation, especially through funding, and internal checks check on the judicial power by a higher courts and the will of the people through elections. That is the end of part two, chapter 10.